Hello and welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Christina. And in this week's video, I want to share five easy, simple DIY projects, either for gift and maybe even some holiday decor. I'm going to talk you through the materials as well as the techniques. So let's head over to project one. I have wanted to try a loop it finger looping yarn for a while, and I'm going to use six skeins, some scissors and a 14 by 20 pillow and show you how to make a beautiful textured throw pillow. And all the rules apply if you want to make a scarf or a hat. I just want to show you how easy it is to use these loop yarns because you don't need any knitting experience to do so. So I started my row with 26 loops and all you're going to be doing is adding loops to loops pretty easy so wherever your chain is going to start you're just going to move that chain of loops over the chain you're going to loop it into so to demo this on the video i'm just starting with a shorter chain and then i'm going to show you what i did with my project to show you how to actually cast it off. But I'm, what I'm doing is making one side of my throw pillow. So all we're gonna be doing is this form of a finger knitting, just using these loops. So adding one loop into another, then you're gonna turn your working yarn, which already has your loops on it, and you're gonna keep adding more loops. The only thing I found when using this looping yarn is you wanna to try to straighten out your loops as best you can. And you kinda of wanna run the back of your finger on your working yarn to make sure you're not skipping any loops as you keep looping. But it loops up very, very quickly. This is what it's gonna look like on the back and that's what it's gonna look like on the front as you continue on. So it looks like a stitch, but it's just done with loops that are already there. So this is great as a beginner. It's great for somebody who doesn't have a lot of knitting experience because you don't have to worry about the sizing. You don't have to worry about using needles or a hook. You just literally put the one loop inside another loop and keep working your way up on the size pillow that you want to work with. When I make a pillow cover for an insert, I kind of gauge it based on the measurements of the pillow. So this pillow that I'm working on is 14 by 20. So what I did is I gave myself a couple of little extras. So I'm making this 24 in length and about 14 inches in width. So you're just going to gauge the number of stitches based on the inches of the pillow you're going to work with. But as you can see, it just goes along very, very quickly. I try to keep the loops straight up. I try not to let them twist. And as I got into the project more and more, it just got faster and faster. But even better, you don't have to add an extra stitch. You don't have to take a stitch away. You don't have to have anything special. It's just loop in to another loop and voila we have the back side of the pillow. Now I love the overall knitted look with this, but I actually really like the back side of it. And I think I might even end up using the back side. I'll show you that in just a minute. So what I wanna show you is how to cast off your loops. So I'm gonna cut open a loop and then I'm just gonna make a small little tail. Then I'm gonna go back to the very left side where my loops start. And to cast off, all you need to do is put one loop into another. That's it. Grab the next loop, put that loop into that, and it almost looks like a braid, just similar to a knit, and it's just casting off all the loops so they all tie in together. And then when we get to the end, we're gonna take that little tail piece that we cut, and then we're just going to probably put in about two knots just to keep it nice and secure. Once I finish this, I'm gonna set this aside so I can show you how to make the front side and we can make the super textured side of the pillow. But as you can see, I kind of like the back stitch of these loops versus the front and it's just the look of it. It almost looks like pearl stitches. So to create this bulky look, what you're going to be doing is I'm gonna put 
my first row of loops in. Now what you're going to want to do is put two more rows of loops in the same loop. So three sets of loops go in one loop. Then what you're going to be doing is the third row of your three loops that went into the one loop, that third row is where you're going to add another row of stitch. This way you can graduate your rows up. Once you get a few rows going of this exact style, it will actually get easier and easier. But when you first get it started, it seems a little bit bunched but I do promise it gets a little bit easier. Right now I'm just finishing my second row of loops. So when I get into my third row of loops, I'll show you what to do. Even if you have to stop and start, you can see exactly how many loops you have in one loop. It's pretty visible. So right now I only have the two rows in one loop. Now I'm going to graduate it into my third sets of loops going into the loop. But this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the loop in, then what I want to do is pull it up. That's the key. Your third loop in one loop is going to go up. And I'm going to do all across. And I'm going to show you exactly why. We want to create length. So we want it to go, keep going up. And that's exactly what that third row is going to do for us. So the reason we want to pull that third loop up is we're going to chain a new row of loops to start a new bulk of three going into the loop. So I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So now that I have my third row of loops all in the same loop from the beginning, what I want to do is make sure all of that third row is pointing up now I'm going to take the working yarn with the loops. So two are down, one is up. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to stitch my new row of loops and I'm going to actually keep it faced up because what we're going to do as soon as we're done this row is we're going to start our new set of three loops in one. And that's all you have to do. So I've done, I think, three rows already. So this is what it's going to start to look like. And then I'm also going to show you how to attach your backside to your front side. But going back to the loops, I just want to show you again. It's really easy. It's just understanding that you're going to put three rows in one loop. Third row is always going to be faced up add a new row of loops, almost like you're adding a new row of stitches, then you're going to be making sure that you have three loops in one. And then the third loop again is going to face up. That's the only thing you have to do to create that nice bulky texture for the top of this pillow. It is really thick, it's plush, it's super soft, and it's washable because it's chenille yarn. It washes really nice and you can put it in the dryer. So as I said, I just finished my third row of loops. So I'm going to fold them all down and see I'm now exposing that one loop that I'm putting the three loops in. So I have two in there. Now I have my third row ready to go. So I'm going to put my loops in and remember when you get to that third row, you're going to point that loop straight up. And when you do that, that's going to get ready to set on a new chain of new loops to go three into one. And again, that's what's creating that really thick loopy plush look, that extra texture. So again, I'm just working on my third row and I'm going to be pointing those up. Now I'm going to start a new chain of loops and when I do, I'm just going to cast them on. When I do that, I will pull the, all those loops. I'll just fold them down so I can use that same loop again. So it's just following that pattern. That's it. I'm just going to fold down this third row and then I'm going to just, that's actually my first row of three. So I'm going to add two more and keep repeating. So almost think of it as two is for bulk, 
One is so that way you can cre keep creating the length that you need. And it does actually happen quite quickly. So once everything has kind of a rhythm and actually has a little bit of bulk to it, it goes so much quicker. So now I'm putting in my third row because I already have two. And you can always see how many you have. So if you stop in your project and have to go do something and come back to it, you can always see exactly where you were at. Was I on row one, row two, or am I on row three? So I wasn't sure exactly how many rows and how many loops I was going to need for my top of my pillow. So I would just test it out every so often and I would kind of just gauge how much more I would need to go. So based on where I'm at now, I just kind of counted it. And again, I'm using a 14 by 20 inch throw pillow insert. And now I'm just kind of counting out that I'm probably going to need about another four more rows. And then I can show you how you can attach the two sides. So now we're going to cast it off. It's the exact same as we did with the underneath of the throw that we started with. I'm just taking one loop, then I'm going to add a loop. Take one loop from the left, add the right one in. And you're just going to go all the way around. It's going to form a little bit of a braid. So, and it's actually going to be kind of on the fold of the pillow itself. So I'm not too, too worried about that. So again, take the left loop, put the right loop in, take the left loop, put the right loop in. When you get to the end, just take your tail and you can go ahead and make a knot or two knots. And then we can go ahead and put them both together. This whole project really didn't take very long and it's so bulky, it stitches up very, very quickly. It's just watching how the loops are done, and once you have that pattern of three and one, you are good to go. But like I mentioned, it's always gonna depend on the size. Are you gonna have a 12 by 12? Are you gonna have a 24 by 24? So just gauge based on the loops and the length that you need. So you're gonna need some kind of string or a similar matching yarn. This is all I had. It's just a velvet, it's super thin, but this is gonna allow me to stitch the back and the front together. You could use a really thick floss thread, whatever you have at home that's handy. Like I mentioned earlier, I think I'm gonna use the actual backside for the backside of the pillow because I just like the texture, that pearled look. And all you're gonna do is just seam in your piece of yarn or your piece of string, thread, whatever you wanna use, and you're just going to go in and out from both sides, from the back side to the front side, and you're just basically threading it together. It's such a bulky yarn, I wouldn't worry too, too much on the rhythm of how you're threading it, and you're not even gonna see it because it's so thick. So I'm just gonna test in my pillow insert before I do my final close, and that's it. So I picked up this styrofoam ring, and this can be used for reefs, it can be used for a lot of different crafts, you can find these even at your dollar store. This is a large size, but there is a medium and a small. And for this project, I used three rolls of the loop yarn to create this reef. I really love the textured look, and it's so bulky and soft. I thought for the holidays this would make a great home decor piece to kind of match in with the holiday theme and all I need is a little bit of glue. So I'm going to start with the top here and I'm just going to start with the loop yarn, attach it with a little bit of glue, then I'm just going to keep unraveling my roll of the loop yarn and I'm going to do it really tightly together so that's going to make the loop yarn nice and bulky and I won't have any gaps. So just keep unraveling it, it's just going to keep going around and making sure that every time I'm going around it's really tightly coiled together. This was unbelievably quick to make, it took me less than an hour to create it. 
What I would do is I would go around maybe five, six times, add a little tiny bit of hot glue just to help secure it a little bit. And again, you don't need to use very much. You can unravel and keep going around as many times as you'd like. But as I say, I just but probably about anywhere from five, maybe six times around, I just take a tiny little dot and just add in a little bit of glue for the security. But as I mentioned, for the larger size, I ended up having to use three balls of the loop yarn to do it. But if you did a medium size, two should be more than enough. And if you did the small reef ring, styrofoam ring, then you should be fine with just the one ball. I do recommend, though, is to get the white. I know they have some different colors out there, but I do recommend if you want to go with this look to go with the color that you've choosed for your loop yarn because loop yarn does have quite a few different color selections and it will be in my description box below so you can take a look at the color palette if you wanted to make a green or a red one. The tighter you make it obviously the less visible the ring itself is going to be but I thought maybe what you can do too is you could add in some holiday embellishments onto the wreath. But you could use this for uh, Thanksgiving, you could use it for other holidays, and then you can just add the embellishments you want for that time of the year. So it's kind of a universal slash home decor kind of idea, so I'm really glad I gave this a try. As soon as I got to the end, I really made sure that I got it in there nice and tight so there wasn't any gaps at the end. And then once I got to the very end, I added in just a little bit more glue so it was nice and tight and well adhered to the reef itself. We really wanted to go with a nice, light, easy Christmas. And to be truthfully honest, I can't find all my stuff since we've moved, so I did find our tree. But for now, I'm really happy with this reef and it's that easy. So I really hope you like this and maybe want to give it a try. So I actually picked these little ornaments up at the dollar store. So they were $1.99 each. I took the little pot off the bottom. I just cut them off and then I'm going to just stick these inside the loop itself. So I'm not going to be using any glue. So that way if I want to take these off and then add other things for another occasion, I can repurpose this wreath for other holidays and other festivals ideas. I recently came across this blanket yarn and it's a confetti and I really love the textured look. So I thought, you know what, this would be great to show how to make a slouch hat. It is so incredibly easy. You could do it in probably an hour to two hours. Again, this is the chunky chenille yarn and it's perfect for gifts or if you just want to make one for yourself. So I really like the slouch hat look and I love wearing hats especially in the cooler months because I get cold really easily especially my hands and the top of my head. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the easiest crochet. You're going to make a slip knot, put your slip knot on your crochet hook and now we're going to go ahead and we're going to chain up. So what I recommend with sizes and hats is what I did, and I'm using my own head and hat as the example here, is I chained 32. And the reason is, is because I took this chain and I actually wrapped it around my head. And it's got a little bit of elasticity to it, so that way, because I don't like my hats too tight. 
So that's just a personal preference. So the best way is to get the measurement of the head that you'd like to make the hat for, or if it's for yourself, just take that chain, wrap it around, and that's gonna tell you the number that you need to start with when you're chaining to start making the hat. Now I do have a bit of a small head, so it would be considered a small hat. What I'm showing you here is what they call a half double crochet. So you're gonna have a loop, you're gonna yarn over that crochet hook, you're gonna go into your chain, create a stitch, then you're gonna have three loops, and then you're gonna take your working yarn and you're gonna pull through all three. That's it, that's all you're gonna do. So loop over, so you have two loops, now you're gonna go into your chain, grab your working yarn, you have three loops, and pull a loop through all three. That's a half double crochet. Just keep repeating this all the way down your chain. It goes very quickly. This is very bulky yarn. This type of yarn, again, will have tons of different colors and different textured looks, so meaning that some will have a shimmer to it, this has a confetti to it, so lots and lots to choose from, so if you're looking for some fun in the holidays, this is the thing to try. Again, it is so easy. At the end of any crocheting, you're going to chain one. If you're doing a double crochet or a triple crochet, you might have to chain two or three, but for this, you only need to chain one. So as soon as you finish that end, chain one, flip your work over. Then Now I wanna show you that this is what a crochet stitch is gonna look like at the top. It actually looks kind of like a braid almost on its side. So there's two little bumps there, there's two little loops there. That's what you're going to stitch into. That's what your stitches are for the rest of this slug chat. So you're just, you don't have to skip anything, you don't have to do anything, just go into that top two bumps. That's where you're gonna create that stitch. So you're gonna put your crochet hook into there yarn over, go into your stitch, pull it out. You're gonna have three loops, grab your working yarn, pull through all three loops. Again, that is a half double crochet. What I wanna show you here is, it's really easy to kind of go on an angle when you're learning to crochet. The thing is, is the last stitch is kind of on the side, so you have to make sure you're picking that one up so in, when you get to the end, it's gonna feel like the end, but just kind of look to the side and kind of go over that curve. You're gonna feel it, it's right there. Just make sure you're picking that up. And don't forget to chain one, turn your work over, and, and then you can continue on with your stitches. But this is a great way to practice, and look, God knows I need to practice too, so I'm never gonna be perfect. I've always made mistakes when it comes to knitting, but I do love doing it. I find it super relaxing. I love making my own projects, and if I can make my own hats and scarves or give them as gifts, even better. So as you can see, all we're gonna be doing at this point is going up 12 rows doing that half double crochet. Nothing else, you don't have to do anything else once we get to that 12, and then I'm gonna show you how to form your hat. So you're gonna cut your working yarn off because we're gonna kind of cast off. Take the tail and go into your last loop, and you can double knot that just to make it extra secure. Then you're gonna take the two short sides fold them together. Now we're gonna take a piece of that yarn and we're gonna stitch the two ends together. That's it, just run it, weave it in and out just like you would a uh, needle and thread. You're just gonna sew those two sides together and when you get to the end, you're going to make a knot and where you started, you also make a knot. So that's gonna secure it. So it's gonna be kind of a tunnel so once I've secured both ends where I've stitched, it almost looks like a placemat, and now I've stitched it together. Now what I'm gonna do is take one end and I'm going to thread all the way around that end. I'm going to overlap the first stitch I started, so that way all I'm gonna do is grab the two ends going through the same loop there, and I'm gonna pull it really tight and that's gonna close for the top of the hat. Now the hat's still inside out, but first I'm gonna go ahead and put 
two knots in there to secure it nice and tight and then I'm going to just cut off the ends and then pull it inside out. If you don't really want it to be overly slouchy you can just make a rim by just folding the ends but I'm enjoying it. I'm going to make a bunch of these for Christmas and I made two already but I really wanted to share one with you and there we go. A slouch hat. I very quickly just want to show you just the basics of what I did to make a matching scarf. The exact same thing as we did with the hat, all I did was make a chain of 12. I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller just for the example of the video, but just to make it nice and straight you're going to do the exact same things that you did with the hat when we were kind of making that rectangle before we made it into a hat. So I'm going to start off with about 10 stitches. But when you're making a scarf, you can make it as wide as you want or if you want a thin scarf. So how many stitches you start with is totally up to you. And again, all we're going to be doing is that half a double crochet. So you're always going to have two loops on your crochet hook. Go into your first stitch there, pull through, then pull all three off. So we'll do that again. So you have a yarn over, so you have two loops. Go into your stitch, pull through your working yarn, you'll have three loops. Then go and grab the working yarn and pull all through three loops. That's all you're doing. And again, don't forget to catch that little stitch that's on the corner there because if you don't go around and catch that, it's gonna make your scarf a little bit slanted. That's the only thing I always find with working with crochet is sometimes I'll forget that or I'll forget to do it and it just makes if I'm working on a blanket or even a scarf it just kind of makes my sides irregular so to make it nice and straight you definitely want to catch that stitch and it's always just on the side there just like I had mentioned with the hat. Once you've caught that and you're ready to go to your next row make sure before you turn your work around that you chain one. You only need to chain one when you're working this type of stitch, the half double crochet. So again, I just wanted to show you a little sample of what I would be doing. So you can start with as many stitches as you want to make your scarf as thick as you want and you can make it as long as you want. Then you're always going to have those two little loops. That's part of the crochet. That's the stitch you're going to go in and you're going to continue on doing that half double crochet. And again, just kind of showing you, you definitely want to get into that side and make sure you're picking up that last stitch. Then add a stitch, turn your work over and continue on. Within the hour or two, you'll have a scarf. So I have a huge project coming and I'm going to be showing you how to use these extra large knitting needles. I've never demonstrated this on my tutorials and this is the one that's attached together so I'm really looking forward to sharing that but for this video I'm going to show you how to make a extra chunky hat. So you're going to go and make yourself a slip knot and you're going to do it about two to three inches there. That's about how big you're going to want your stitch rings because you're going to be doing this by hand. So you're going to be chaining on 12 stitches. So again, this is kind of like a finger hand knitting and so many beautiful colors to choose from to make these as gifts or make them for yourself at this time of year. Once you have your chain of 12, again, I'm doing this based on measurement of my own. So how many you're going to need to chain will depend on the size hat you want. So just take that chain, you can wrap it around your head and say if you're comfortable, take away or add stitches. So that's not a problem at all. The same steps apply. Now what we want to do with this kind of bulky, bulky, chunky yarn is we want to add 
these the last stitch and the first stitch together and that's going to kind of start our hat but first one rule that I kind of go by doing this is the tail that I've left is actually going to be a marker for the rows because we're going to be doing this into a circle and by knowing where that tail is that tells me that that row is completed so I'm going to take that top bump all the way around and I'm going to cast on 12 stitches just with my fingers. So we'll go around twice making these stitches kind of in a circular way. But we don't want to continue the hat that way because we don't want it to go too wide around. So I'll show you a little trick. It's really easy to do. So I've done my first row of stitches and I've gone back to that marker tail. So that's where I've started. So I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna cast on another row, just going around in a circle. And once I get my 12 stitches for this row done, then I'm gonna show that we're gonna fold this hat. So the reason we want that is only for physics. We want our stitches to actually become a little closer together so it forms more like a hat. So now I've used that tail as my marker. So right now I don't want the hat and the width of everything to keep going out. So I'm actually just going to put it into half. So I'm actually just folding it in half, my circle's in half now. My starting point is at my tail. So that tells me that's the starting point and end point to all my rows. So I'm gonna keep casting on stitches and like I said what it's doing by doing this half is it's making the stitches come closer together rather than going out in a circle so I'm going to be going up approximately I think about seven rows so this hat actually only took me 15 minutes to make but you're not in a rush if it takes you 20 minutes half an hour it's super super bulky it will stitch up very very quickly it's super easy to make and you'll love having one or you're really just going to enjoy making it as a Christmas gift. As I mentioned, there are so many beautiful colors and they even have like some multicolored, super bulky blanket yarns like this on the market now. But I'll have this in the description box below. So once I've put on, I think about seven rows, I'll show you exactly how we are going to tie in the hat and then I want to show you how you can make kind of a button. A lot of people put those pom-poms on the top, but I'm going to actually create a faux fur button for the top of this hat. So now that I've gotten to my seventh row, I'm going to use that tail as my indicator as my last stitch. When you're ready to cast this off, just make sure you have just enough to kind of go around all the stitches with your yarn, cut it off. So you're kind of creating a tail now. From left to right in the stitch, I'm just going to pull of that tail of remainder yarn that I have and go left to right all the way around and collect all those open stitches. Once I've gotten back to my midpoint there where the tail is, that's always my indicator, once I've casted everything on, what I'm going to do is actually take the whole hat and I'm going to put it inside out because we're going to kind of make the tail remainder here inconspicuous. So now that I've casted all of the stitches onto that tail, put it inside out, grab the tail, and then just kind of like making a bag, like a bucket bag, just pull it really, really tightly. Not too tight, you don't want to break the yarn, but tight enough that you pull all the stitches as close together as you can. And then go ahead, you can make one or two knots, and then you can cut the remainder tail off. And then your hat is actually finished. So we'll pull it back inside right ways. And now you have a slouchy, chunky hat. Now for the bottom tail, you can tie it into a knot and cut it again. So you'll actually have two knots so it doesn't unravel, but I always just find that if I weave it in because it's so thick and chunky, you won't even tell it's there and it just adds to the bulkiness. 
So I'll show you how I did my faux fur button for the top of my hat, but I really love these. They're so warm. I wanted to show quickly how I created my version. It's not a pom-pom, but it's almost like a round, really fuzzy button for the top of my chunky hat. So I'm gonna make a slip knot, and this is like a faux fur. It is so silky and soft. I'm gonna chain three stitches. Then what I'm gonna do is the half double crochet again. So what you're gonna do is yarn over so you'll have two loops on your crochet hook. Then you're going to go into the first stitch you started, that first loop, pull through a loop, then you're gonna have three loops on your crochet hook, then pull through all three. And you're gonna repeat this. I did this, I think, 15 times in that same loop. So you're gonna make a big round circle. That's all you're gonna be doing. And this is so fuzzy and it's so soft and it's actually a really nice embellishment for the top of the hat. So keep going into that first loop 15 times doing that half double crochet. Once you've completed 15 times, I'm gonna take that last loop plus that first loop I started with, put those two together and make one closing single crochet. Cut off your remainder yarn and then you can tie that into the loop just to close everything off. Then I'm going to take the tail and I'm going to pull it through the small little tiny hole in the center, kind of like a donut. Pull that through and then I'm going to grab the tail that I started with and now I have kind of like this button that's going to suit both in size and look for the chunky hat. So you'll have to feel out for that center hole and just pull the tail through that center hole. Grab a little side stitch there and then you can wrap your tail and make a knot and cut off the tails. I'll show you how to make the infinity scarf. The hat you can make so easily maybe 15, 20 minutes. The scarf, you may need about a half an hour, 40 minutes, but all you're gonna do is start with a slip knot, then I'm gonna chain on seven stitches. For this, I used about a ball and a half, so one and a half skeins of this chunky yarn. Again, it's gonna depend how long you want it, so I'm just showing you the length and the size that I made, but you can always add more or add more rows if you wanna make it longer or take away if you wanna make it shorter. So I'm just gonna go just like I would with my big chunky blankets, which you may check or have seen on my other videos. So we're just gonna chain on here and keep our first row of stitches. So you're just gonna pull through that top bump and I have seven stitches. So starting from the left, I'm gonna go from left to right, right to left. And you're just gonna pull that working yarn through your loops and I'm gonna keep going for 35 rows. I really wanted to make this kind of wide and long. And the idea with the affinity scarf is we want to actually taper it together. So it's just kind of a round shawl all in one. You could take all these steps, but you don't have to do the end step to attach it to make it the affinity. You can just leave it as a standard scarf. Because this is so thick, it's so bulky, it's super soft. Again, you can put this in the washing machine, you can put it in the dryer. It's never been an issue. I've been using this yarn for quite a few years and my projects never have any issues when washing them. So that's what's really great to making these a gift or if you'd like to make it for yourself. So I'm gonna continue going back and forth making my rows and because the rows are so small they're short there's only seven stitches you're going to go back and forth very quickly 
I was able to make this scarf in maybe a half an hour. So, but if you're new to all of this, it's there's no timeline to it. If you need a few extra minutes, so that way you can make sure your stitches are adequate. And again, being a new one, you're not necessarily going to race through it. I have a little bit of experience with the chunky yarn, so I can get through it probably a little quicker. But it's very standard, so I'm going to keep going until I have my 35 rows. Then I'm going to show you how I'm going to attach this. And then again, it's going to create that nice a circle and it's going to be perfectly seamless and it's super warm and super thick and it looks so beautiful, especially when you make the hat and the scarf. So for both projects, you will need three skeins of this or three balls of the chunky yarn. If you need to attach your yarns, you're just going to make a nice knot and you don't want to pull too hard because you don't want to break the yarn. But I find if you pull from all four sides and then just cut off the tails, it will be very inconspicuous. You won't see it. This yarn is so thick and chunky. The other way, if you don't want to use the big chunky yarn, is you can actually take two or three thick yarns and stitch them together. And you can actually hand stitch the exact same way that you see me using this chunky yarn. So you can do it by hand and make the exact same scarf. So I'm going to take the two ends, the shorter ends, and what we want to do is we want to chain off and stitch at the same time. So going left to right, I'm going to take the stitch itself plus I'm going to take that starter chain so there's actually going to be three loops so with the three loops normally when you're chaining off you're only going to use two loops to chain off but because we're actually stitching it together and chaining off at the same time you're actually going to take your work chain that you were stitching at and then you're going to take two loops that way you can gather both sides once you've chained and pushed your working yarn through you're going to have kind of like a braid and that's going to make it more seamless like and then with your tail you can weave it or you can just make a knot or two knots and cut it off i generally will just weave it then you're going to turn it back around and there's your infinity scarf. Definitely one of the warmest scarfs you can have. Thank you so much for watching this week's video and please, if you have any questions and or comments, leave me a comment in the comment box below. All the supplies in which I've used will also be found in the description box below. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and notification bell. That's going to tell you when I upload my next video. I have so many more fun DIYs, room makeovers, and some furniture transformations to share with you soon. So from our house to your house, happy holidays, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you soon. Really? Really? Seriously, you're not as shy today. Oh, guys, you need shampoo. You do, you need some shampoo. I need to do this intro outro. Do you guys want to go outside? Do you want to go outside? Do you want to go outside? Okay, let's go outside. No, it's just too much information. Do you want me to collect a poodle? I think so. Okay. I think we're gonna, maybe two. Raph, I have a poodle bum coming off my shoulder. This is not working. Can you, can you sit down? Can you come sit down?